I'm Brooke, and welcome to part two of the Decolaire Palais Brook Review. So first of all, happy 4th of July. This is um, 4th of July 2011, and I'm really excited. So um, let's get started. Part two, this is part two. Part one of my Decolaire Palais Brook Review is the actual Brook Review about um, my Sky City Trilogy. So just in case you haven't seen that video, you might want to go check it out. But this is book one that I wrote. It's called De Couleur Palais, which means pastel in French. It's about a city in the sky. Book two is A Battle of Fate. Book three is Scarred, which just came out a couple of months ago. But part two of the video is going to be more about... Um, more about the writing process and how I actually wrote my books and how I self-published, etc. So for those of you that like writing and are trying to figure out how to get yourself out there, this video is for you. If you were more interested in reading the books, you might want to check out part one. Alright, so I just want to start out by saying that it's not easy to write a book. Now, I don't say that to discourage you, I say that so you don't sit down thinking that this is going to be um, an easy one month, two month project. When I was 12 years old, it took me about four to six months to write my first book. I was in seventh grade. And there were a couple of things that I think really kept me going when I was writing. Um, one was that I had goals. And goals, what you have to do is you have to know what you want. You have to know exactly what you want. And you want to write it down as well. So, and you set a deadline for yourself. So I set a deadline for my, um, especially for my second and third books, and that's what helped me get through those as well. My first one, I think I started out not really knowing what was going to happen. I got kind of lucky with the first book. But goals are a big part of actually finishing something and accomplishing your dreams. And I am big, really huge on goals. So. A second thing that really helped me finish my books was the time that I had. You really have to, kind of like a goal, you have to specifically set apart time to sit down and do what you want to do. And goals and setting time, you know, setting a specific time to do something, don't have to apply to writing. It can apply to anything in life. So that's why I'm specifically big on goals, because they can be applied in all aspects. And the third thing that really helped me when I was writing my book was the friends that I had. I got to share my, um, share my writing with them and they encouraged me to keep writing. It was great motivation and I, I think that's how I really finished. So my books are self-published, which means that they are published through a big publishing company and they're not in bookstores. You can find my books online at um, Amazon.com. Borders.com, Booksamillion.com, CreateSpace.com. CreateSpace is um, a company through Amazon.com that helps you self-publish books. And it does not cost money to publish these books. Like, it did not, um, I didn't have to pay any type of fee to get my books self-published. Now, my dad, um, he's a big computer person, and he helped me format the books correctly. So when I was finished writing this first book, De Couleur Palais, I let my dad read the book and he went through and edited it for me. Now I want to make this clear, he did not change any of my writing. He would um, specifically look for misspellings, things like that. I actually had my sister read the first book and um, she caught a lot of mistakes that I missed. And then my dad formatted it so that um, See these like these little bullets in the middle? My dad helped me put those in when I was changing perspectives throughout the book. I got to choose the font size, the um, color of the pages, the um, everything about it really, which was really fun to do. I actually helped design the cover and that's a really fun part of creating the book so I'll go over that in a couple of minutes. So once um, my dad and I formatted the book, what we'd have to do is send the book into Amazon. We would ship the book to Amazon and they would create a proof copy. And I think, let's see, when it comes back it looks like this. It has a giant word proof in the back. 
that means that this, um, it's not, it hasn't been put up onto Amazon.com yet, and it's not available for purchase. It's just a book that I can look at to say, okay, is everything the way I want it to be? When it is, we have to send it off to Amazon again, and um, they approve it to be put online. And when it is finally online, it is available per for purchase. And um, that is where um, the real... Let's see, what do you call that it? That is the real catch about um, self-publishing. My books are pretty expensive for paperback books. They are $11.95 online. And I only make, let's see, one or two dollars per book because the rest of the money goes to Amazon to help print the book. It is a process called print on demand. So when someone orders it, say you go online and you order my first book. Amazon will create the book and then send it to you. That's why it cannot be put in bookstores yet. We are actually working on that. But so it's called print on demand, and that's those that's the basis, um, the basics of self-publishing. So now I want to talk a little bit about um, creating the cover because to me that is the fun part about the book. Like I said before, my dad is a big computer person, so um, he knows how to use Photoshop. And what I did first was I would sketch out what I wanted. I knew exactly um, what I wanted. On I wanted clouds on the front cover, blue a blue sky on the front cover, and I wanted the castle um, to be shown. So I kind of sketched it out for my dad, and we looked for images on... Um, Oh, we looked up, we look, we searched for images on iStock Photo, and we had to buy a couple of the images, and then we got to play around with the fonts and the colors and um, the positioning. I got to write the back of the book, what goes on the back, and I actually even wrote my own about the author page. So that was pretty cool. And then when I got to my second book, I knew I kind of had this theme going with the covers that I wanted it to be before the storm after the storm, or um, during the storm, so this is the gray clouds, clashing swords, the color red, this is like the um, meat of the series, and then after the storm, so the kind of pink and purple sky, you know, like the sun is, the sun is going down. So those are the covers of my books. Now, um, you know, but say you don't want to write books, say you're not going to be an author, you could like to write poetry or maybe short stories. There are so many websites online where you can submit your work and win prizes or um, are featured in maybe magazines. And I'm actually a part of a couple of websites. My favorite is actually called Goodreads.com. I have mentioned Goodreads.com several times on my blog. And just to let you know, this was in my last video as well. My blog is www.brookeharrison.com. And Goodreads is a, site, is a site specifically for people who love to read, like me, which is why I create book reviews. Anyway, you can write your own um, book reviews on goodreads.com, keep track of the books you read, you can submit your writing. So um, a lot of people will write stories online, and it's a great way to, um, for beginning authors as well, or for someone that um, isn't, maybe isn't interested in publishing. The one thing about submitting work online is that you don't want to write the full story um, just in case you want to publish later. Because once it's published online, um, you can't really take it back. So I would suggest, if you're serious about writing, I'd suggest posting only the first three or four chapters, depending on how many chapters there are in the book. But poetry, I write poems on my website. So um, on my blog, all of my poetry is posted. And that's a great way for people to know more about you and to get to know you through, through your writing. But um, I think I've covered almost everything about writing and self-publishing. And if you want to know more, you can 
uh, go to my blog and leave a comment or email me. There is a page called Q&A with Brooke, and if you click on that page, it will give you um, an email that you can reach me with to ask me questions. And there's actually a video. Um, I speak at schools. I've only done um, three presentations, three presentations so far, on um, everything that I just told you, but in much more detail. So. I normally speak to between um, to middle schoolers, so between grades like fifth and maybe ninth, mostly sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. Um, but so far, I've really enjoyed doing it, and I think the kids have enjoyed it as well. But I have um, one of my videos on my blog, and um, I spoke at a school called Holy Comforter. So it was a private school, but um, I spoke to um, fifth and sixth graders, I believe. Uh, four, so four classes, two classes of fifth graders, two classes of sixth graders, and that video is on my blog. So if you're interested about um, interested in learning more about me and more about the process of publishing my own books, then by all means, um, check it out. So um, thank you so much for watching, and comment below or um, visit my blog. So thanks. Bye.